Hey everybody, this is Deb with Truthification Chronicles, and this was something that the U.S. Army posted on January 13th, and it refers to this article right here from the Army.mil site, and 2019 brings changes to military justice system. Let's go to the article itself and let's see what it has to say. Now notice the date of this is January the 1st and the reason for that is because Trump did an executive order on this and it came into effect on January 1st. So the court's martial manual has been updated and it took effect January 1st. So that's what we have going on and this is out of Fort Meade, Maryland. A host of changes to the Uniform Code of Military Justice came effective January 1st, modernizing definitions for many offenses, adjusting maximum penalties, standardizing court-martial panels, creating new computer crime laws, and much more. So there's a lot to it. I mean, it's like over 400 pages, I think, so it's really kind of long. I have not read the whole thing. I have read bits and pieces, and then this article kind of picks out some important parts. There's more to it that would be interesting to read, but I just can't get everything read and still do videos. I mean, I'd like to sit and read forever, but it just doesn't happen. This article is quoting Colonel Sarah Root, Chief of the Army's Military Justice Legislation Training Team. And she and three members of her team spent the last year traveling to 48 installations to train 6,000 legal personnel and law enforcement agents about the changes. Her two-day classes include everyone from judges to law clerks and privates to generals, she said, and even 600 from other military services. After Trump signed this executive order, it had to wait for a period of time to give her and her team time to go around and to train the people in all these new changes and updates so they'd be prepared. What kinds of changes? Well, there's several of them. Over the years, it has had some updates, but as she says here, it was piecemeal. So it was a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit there. Trump had them go through and redo the whole thing so it was better put together. And it did do a few things that I want to point out. If you go down here, they did change the definition of adultery because before it was pretty sex specific. So in this case now, it is not necessarily, and it did include some other types of sex other than sexual intercourse. And I'm not going to deal with that right now, but that was part of it. And then protecting junior soldiers in case they need it. That was something else, so they can't be abused by those in authority over them. Computer crimes I thought was very interesting and how they have put that in and especially intentionally damaging government computers or installing a virus can also bring five years in the clinker. So there's some things here that they talk about with the computers and updating that, which is an important thing and needed to be on there. Cyber stalking is also now included as a stalking offense under Article 130 of this. And then the courts martial, there's some interesting things with the courts martial. I'm not sure how much is actually going to change in practicality, but there are some things that I did want to point out to you. They did put in a little bit more of a cushion for people who have lesser type crimes, if you want to say that. And so it doesn't necessarily have to be the full weight of a court martial if they're doing some of these minor things. And then they go on and they talk about plea deals, plea agreements in lieu of a contested trial they usually have more than half of them get plea deals. Now, I know we were talking about that on a previous video. Yes, more than half of them do usually get a plea deal. But one of the interesting things here is that the judge can sentence not only the maximum sentence, but they can do a minimum sentence as well. So the judge could say, yeah, this person has to have no less than five years and no more than 25 or something like that. So they can set a minimum amount. That means if you have criminals that you definitely don't want to get out for a while, you can make sure that they are forced to stay there for at least a minimum amount of time. And I think that's probably a very good change there that they can do that. And then there's something about changing the number of people on the panels 
and how the panels have to work with a non-capital court-martial and capital offenses such as murder. I would think treason would fall under a capital offense, in my opinion. And so expanded authority. This is what I wanted to point out to you. Congress expanded judges' authorities to issue investigative subpoenas earlier in the process, for example, to obtain a surveillance video from a store. One of the most significant changes is that now military judges can issue warrants and orders to service providers to obtain electronic communications, such as email correspondence. Hmm, can you imagine how many cases are going to be built now out of email correspondence? For those of you who are not familiar with Peter Strzok and Lisa Page, their text messages have been really important to setting up the case for the Obama FBI really targeting President Trump. We understand that because we've seen their text messages. I think a similar thing is being set up here. Not just text messages, but also email correspondence. I think between those two, it's going to be really important for them to be able to issue those subpoenas to get that information. So the electronic communications, I think, is a really big thing. And then the minimum sentencing, I think, is big, too. And then, if you read through some of the other processes that they've been doing, some of the things that caused this update in the first place, a number of other procedural changes are aimed at making the military justice system even more efficient, Root said. So I think what's happened, aimed at speeding up the post-trial process, I just think that they've streamlined it so that it can go a lot faster in case they have a large amount of people to process. So that's what I think has been going on. And then they talk about other changes to the punitive offenses. Like this one. This one was kind of weird. For burglary, the definition of burglary is changed to include breaking and entering any building or structure of another any time with the intent to commit any offense under this manual. In the past, burglary was limited to breaking and entering the dwelling house of another in the nighttime. That's pretty specific, isn't it? So I'm glad they changed that because, yeah, it wouldn't matter if it was a house or if it was a building. It should still be considered breaking and entering. And, you know, the penalty for wearing unauthorized metals, you can get it increased from six months to a maximum of a one-year confinement. So I think that's a good thing to see. And then it talks about regarding misconduct that occurred prior to January 1st, the changes to the punitive articles are not retroactive. What that means is that on January 1st, anybody who commits crimes that are going to be judged under that particular manual have to have committed them after January 1st. This is one reason why I think we're not seeing anything big yet because they had to wait for them to commit some crimes. And I think they will. They, they definitely will. That's just their way of life. So they will do it eventually. It's just giving them time and giving them enough rope to hang themselves, essentially. So that's what we have here. That's the article that the Army put out. And I thought I should draw your attention to that because I think it's very apropos for what's going on. And everybody from here on out, any crime committed within the military or it has to be adjudicated by the military justice system will be adjudicated according to this manual and the information in it. So I wanted to let you know that. And that's why the Army wanted to point it out too. They put it on here and you can go through and you can read some of this. So interesting things are happening and I don't think it's coincidental that they put this out and I don't think it's coincidental that this article came out either. So things are happening, things are moving. I don't know when the timing's going to be, but I see it getting closer and closer all the time. So keep watching the news, that's all we can do at this point. I'm sure there's things going on that we don't know about and they're getting closer and closer to the surface. Don't let the House Democrats get you frustrated. 
because when all this comes out, they're just not going to be able to stand. I am working on a video on the process of how they remove representatives and senators who need to be removed. And so I'm working on that. I'm trying to sort through all the documents. There's some question as to exactly what percentage has to be and how the percentage is figured when they do the vote on it. Do they need to have a quorum? Do they not? Is it two thirds of a vote? what and so I'm trying to nail all that down before I make the video but I wanted to share this part with you it's all going to be coming together it's like little pieces of a puzzle and eventually we're gonna start seeing the whole picture fit together but we need to get all those pieces out there so we can see what they are first so that's what I've got for you and I wanna thank you for stopping by and I'll see you all later Bye.